Hello. You've probably heard by now that Apple recently added spatial audio support to Apple Music. And the thing they're really uh, excited about with that is the ability for you to stream and listen to Dolby Atmos surround sound mixes. And they say you can even listen to it on a pair of earbuds or headphones. But Dolby Atmos is like surround sound on steroids. It has multiple speakers. It was developed for cinemas, and it includes extra speakers that add height information to the mix. So how does it make sense that we can listen to those on headphones with just two speakers? It's not as crazy as it sounds, because we only have two ears, and we still manage to get an impression of surround sound from a multi-speaker system. So in this video, I just want to give you an introduction to Dolby Atmos and show you how it works and how it can create a surround sound effect on headphones. I'm going to be doing that in the Dolby Atmos renderer application, which you can see here. It's a pretty complicated application, so I'm just going to kind of skim over the surface of it. Basically, you have over here effectively the input channels for the encoder. Over here, you have a visual representation of the listening space, which we'll look at in a minute. But let's just start by looking here at the speaker layout. So a traditional 5.1 system would have a left, a center, and a right channel at the front, and a left surround and a right surround, plus the low frequency effects channel for, you know, kind of rumbles and explosions. A 7.1 system adds in side surround channels, one on the left and one on the right, which you can see here. And then a 7.1.4 system adds an additional four speakers, which you can see represented here, for the height information. So if you pan a sound into these, the sound will literally come from above your head. And we send the audio to the renderer from the... Dolby Atmos surround panel, which you can see here. So again, this time you have a top-down view of the listening space, and you can see we can choose to move that around the listener in any way that we like. And we can also adjust here the Z component, which is the height information. So if I turn this up, you can see that's getting larger to signify that it's moving up to the top of the room. And you can see that reflected over here in the renderer. You can see there, because I've got maximum height, that central channel has been panned up. As I pull that down there, you can see that it's moving around the space, left speaker, right speaker. Um, I can bring it back to the rear. So, And we can click and drag, and we can move that all around the space. So that's all well and good if you have a multi-channel listening environment. But what happens if you don't? That's where Dolby Atmos gets really clever. Remember, it was developed for use in cinemas. So the format supports as many as 64 loudspeakers, which is way more than any domestic system would ever have. The difference is that whereas with a 5.1 or even a 7.1 system, you have a single file that gets played out of each speaker when you create the master. With an Atmos mix, that doesn't apply. At least, you can assign audio to specific speakers, in which case you create something called a bed. You can see that there is a 7.1.4 bed at the top of the channel layout here in the renderer. But the rest of these are what's known as objects. And with an object, you can pan them around using the surround panner, and you can actually automate those pans as well, and have all of that integrated into the Atmos master file. So. In effect, the 3D mix exists independently from the number of playback channels or playback speakers. And that means that the playback of the mix can be optimized for the number of speakers that you have. So if it's played in a cinema system with a ton of speakers, it will be optimized for that. If it's played in a 7.1.4 room, it will be optimized for that. If it's played in a 5.1 room, it will be optimized for that. And it can also be optimized for headphones. And the key to playing back a surround sound mix on headphones is to emulate something called binaural recording. I'm a big fan of binaural audio. It's, it's really clever. It's based around the idea that the sound that we hear is influenced by the shape of our head 
and the shape of our ears. So if you imagine a sound that's coming from over here towards me, it reaches this ear almost directly, but to reach this ear it has to go around my head. And that changes the sound that reaches our ears, and so does the complicated shape of the ear itself. So it's almost like the sound that actually gets into our ears has a sonic fingerprint associated to it, which is unique to our own head and ear shape. And that gives all kinds of clues to our brain that enables us to figure out detailed information. If you can try this experiment yourself, if you take a mobile phone and just play some music, or even better, some pink noise through it, and hold it and move it around your head, you will hear the tone of that sound change. Um, lots of different subtle ways, but one of the most obvious is that you get a fairly obvious notch in the frequency response, which changes frequency depending on the angle and the height uh, of the sound that reaches our ears. Now, as I say, that's different for everybody because we all have different heads and ears, but you can generalise those uh, ways that the sound is changed by interacting with our heads uh, into something called the head-related transfer function. And that enables you to effectively emulate binaural recording. I actually have a pair of wearable binaural mics. They might look like earbuds, but they're microphones that you can wear in your ears. And the first time I did a recording on them using this little Zoom recorder, uh, I did it in another room in the house and I realised that I didn't have a way of listening back to it. I came in here to put some headphones on, and then suddenly realised I'd accidentally started the computer playing back some audio. Then I stopped and realised that the computer wasn't on, and in fact what I was hearing was the sound of the TV set recorded through the binaural mics, and the result was so three-dimensional and realistic I actually thought there was sound with me in the room. So binaural is a very clever idea, and the idea of emulating it in software so that we can give the impression of sounds coming from above or below or around to the back of our heads and sometimes even in front is very clever and I think is one of the key ingredients that could make Dolby Atmos a big success. And I'm going to try and demonstrate that to you using this example mix that I've been playing with here. And what I'm actually going to do is, is pan this source around so that you can hear the binaural emulation, the HRTF head related transfer function emulation that's used by Dolby Atmos for headphone playback. So you need to listen to this on headphones to get the proper effect. But what I suggest is that you start off with your eyes closed and just try and imagine what the sound is doing. And then you can open your eyes and I'll keep doing the same thing and you can see whether the emulation, whether the, the binaural effect is working for you. It will be more effective for some people and less effective for others. I actually think it's pretty convincing, but take a listen and see what you think. So if you close your eyes, And then when you're ready, open them and see whether your imagination of what the sound source was supposed to be doing matches what I'm actually doing with the mouse. I don't know about you, but I really do find that quite effective. For me, the idea of the sound coming from right in front of you doesn't really work unless it's connected to a picture. So for example Apple TV is broadcasting with Dolby Atmos sound and I find that in that situation it really is surprisingly almost uncannily effective. Let's try one other thing. I'll move this round to the side and then I'll change the elevation parameter. So take a listen and see what you think of this. So there you go. 
that shows you in a nutshell how this works. Dolby Atmos encodes a surround sound mix, a surround sound mix that is translatable to almost any number of speakers. When you listen to it on headphones, it attempts to emulate the three-dimensional representation of the sound using HRTF emulated binaural spatialization. You may or may not think that's successful. Um, and of course, it involves a lot of extra challenges for the mixing engineer because they have to check the way that everything sounds in a full surround setup and also in a binaural fold down because that's how the vast majority of people are going to be hearing these mixes for the first time. And I'll just quickly play you a little bit of the full mix that I've got here with some of the other elements in so you can hear how it works. So for example we've got the drums panned to the front, I've got some reverb panned to the rear of the image and if we look in the renderer we'll see that those are panned to the back whereas the drums pan towards the front. see there I've been fairly conservative with my placement of sounds. This is an adaptation of a stereo mix rather than building something in Atmos from the ground up. But hopefully it gives you an idea how this works. So there you go. Hopefully that gives you a better idea of what Dolby Atmos is and how it could potentially give people the impression of surround sound even when they're listening on earbuds or stereo headphones. It's a really complex topic though, and there's a lot of interesting details to go into. So I have other videos planned uh, talking more about some of the different aspects of Dolby Atmos, like for example, why I'm excited about the dynamics of Atmos mixes and what they might mean for the loudness wars. And also uh, what the different way that Apple have implemented spatial audio to play Atmos means for the way that it sounds when you listen to it on earbuds or headphones. So if you're interested to hear those topics, then uh, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon uh, to be informed as soon as they go live. My name is Ian Shepherd. Thanks for listening.